Hello. Thank you so much for having me. So my name is Johanna Pirker and I'm a computer science professor at Graz University of Technology and my focus is really on game development and games research. So I'm interested about everything um, which is mm, in the field of esports, games, entertainment games, but also educational games. Yes, uh, my name is Danny Liepold. I'm known as Prunes on the internet. I'm a professional FIFA player. I play on international tournaments and I also have a YouTube channel on which I upload my FIFA videos and I have around 1 million subscribers. Hey, uh, I'm Mohamed Harkus. I'm from Bochum, Germany, and I'm a professional FIFA player for Focus Clan. And I'm five-time German champion and the world champion, the reigning. <laughs> I've been working in sponsorship for the past uh, 20 years, half of that with uh, Audi. Um, from the traditional football and winter sports to some basketball uh, engagements. Um, and uh, I've started uh, the whole esports topic um, within, uh, within Audi. Especially in Europe, I think we are a little bit far behind. I think um, it's such a huge market what games are in general. I'm not only talking about esports, but games in general are always so much underestimated. I think I get so many... Um, people to, to answer football or soccer. Do they play soccer or football? No, they like to watch. And so why it's not okay, like if I ask someone, hey, what game do you like? League of Legends, for instance. It's, um, so many aspects um, covering here. It started off as a platform for gamers and people watching gamers, but all of a sudden you can find cooking shows, you can find people doing tourist trips, um, you can, you can I don't know, I see pretty much everything. People are making lectures in there. Um, so it, it's becoming so much more popular for everything else as well. Uh, it's not just sitting at home and playing games. It's a bit more professional. So we have a team around us. Uh, we have training sessions. We have a coach. We have someone who looks that we do enough sports. As a brand, you have to go into these channels where you reach these people, um, our future customers. Esports is growing the last years and especially for FIFA it has a real hype uh, at the pandemic as we know there were no football so all the football players stayed at home and all of them love to play FIFA on the console. Games have changed so much over the past years. So since the game development tools are so much more accessible now for pretty much everyone because they are free to use and easier to use so you don't need to be a professional programmer anymore. Um, pretty much Every one of us can develop now small games. So this also means I can tell my personal story instead of making a small video uh, or a small writing a small book. I can share my personal story as an interactive experience as the game. I start playing at home alone because um, yeah, eight nine years ago we can't play online and it's not like now. So we played with friends or with my brother and yeah, try to be better and. Uh, yeah, in that time you can you can learn uh, something from others. Like three, four, five years ago, the pro scene start to stream and pro player yeah start to share the play. So I can I can learn from them. I yeah I could learn from them so much, and I yeah I was better and better and better towards the pro scene play. It's about the the, the different channels. So um, you, d you don't see much of uh, new esports uh, topics on traditional TV, but it's basically all online. Mm -hmm. um, we have measure have been measuring that for the past two years already. So it's it's easier, it's it's, it's quicker to get the results, um, but um, also there is a, is an uncertainty uh, about the figures as well. So um, you can certainly discuss uh, if, uh, if someone streams or watches a stream for, for three hours, is he actually really watching it for three hours or is it just running on, the, on his screen? Mm -hmm. So this is really hard to determine. FIFA 35, you have to run in front of the TV and you have to shoot yourself to be good at FIFA. You don't know about it. I strongly believe that virtuality will be a big driver within the future. Um, not only for the games, but also for all other industries. And I want to have this like player one experience where my future game experiences are as realistic as possible. So this is definitely something which I strongly believe will be an interesting um, point to look at in the future. For us as a brand um, to reach um, our future customers or 
just a, a younger audience. We have to go into these channels, so we have to support them in, in uh, what they're doing, and, and uh, that means we have to potentially um, find completely new ways to to really support esports and grow esports together with uh, with the community, and not just wait for things to happen and then jump on it and just just put our logo on it. It's really good distributed, like between 50 and 60 percent of the gamers are male. Um, and so this does not mean um, it's, it's almost 50 50. So we women love, love to play video games as well. Maybe the genre differs, maybe the type of game is different um, yeah, according to the statistics. But it's such a cliche that um, it's only men who play video games. Yeah. Accessibility is like one of the biggest elements um, which which I find super interesting um, about the video game development. And I, I think most of the companies are really doing a great job to create as accessible um, games as possible. So games are really a good uh, outlet for people who couldn't do any other sports otherwise or have limited um, possibilities to move at all. And games are really, really, really good place to be here because of these social aspects and because of the possibility to learn and explore.